AO Tennis 2. It's the game that makes a positive first impression, but much like a one-sided tennis match, the excitement fades fast. At first glance, you might think that you found a solid tennis game, but the longer you play, the more predictable and shallow it becomes. In this review, I will break down why AO Tennis 2 feels more like an exhibition match than a real Grand Slam contender. Sure, AO2 has its highlights, like the carrier mode that's surprisingly well executed. But if you're looking for a tennis game with staying power, this one might not be the ace you are hoping for. So is it worth your time or just a quick fling for a discount? Well, let's dive in. Oh, and before we jump into the details, if you'd like to hang out with me and chat with other tennis gaming fans, then join my Discord server. Link is in the video's description. So let's start with the gameplay. After spending hours playing tiebreak, I was actually surprised to have some fun with AO Tennis 2, at least for the first few hours. The game feels deeper at first, with precision aiming and timing based shot release. But the more I played, the more I noticed how the gameplay feels scripted, unrealistic and kind of shallow. The computer player is just as bad here as it is in tiebreak. The way the ball moves and the balance between shots also don't feel right at all. And once you figure out the computer's pattern, what works and what doesn't, the game stops being challenging. So depending on how good you are at tennis games, you might get a few good hours out of AO Tennis 2. But honestly, at the end of the day, it's just a really mixed bag. So, Let's look a bit closer at how the gameplay works. First, let's talk about how the shots feel in this game and how the mechanics work. One thing I really like about AO Tennis 2 is that it lets you aim your shots with precision. Plus, you have to time your shots well. And that makes the gameplay more fun and it gives you more control over what happens in the game. At the easier levels, timing your shots is actually pretty forgiving. But once you crank up the difficulty, it gets a lot harder. Honestly, I think it's a really weird idea to make the game tougher by just messing with the shot timing. The precision aiming is a neat feature, but could be implemented way better. In AO Tennis 2, it's just a small dot, showing where your ball will land exactly if you time your shot perfectly. I really wish they used a bigger aiming reticle with more room for variety and error even when your timing is spot on. And that's because once you get the hang of timing your shots perfectly, you can pretty much hit the lines quite consistently. And this makes the game way too easy and a little bit boring since there's not much variety in the gameplay. Now let's talk about movement, which is super important factor in tennis games. In AO Tennis 2, movement is heavily assisted. That means you mostly focus on making your shots while the computer moves your player around. It's actually not uncommon for arcade style tennis games to do this. Personally, I'm not a fan of automated movement. Moving your player is a huge part of tennis. And when the game does it for you, it takes away a lot of challenge, skill and fun. Granted, there is a slider that lets you adjust how much the game helps you with movement. But honestly, it doesn't solve the underlying problem. The whole gameplay in AO Tennis 2 is designed around having some assistance. So if you turn it off completely, the game just becomes very frustrating. And that's because the ball moves too fast to position yourself well while aiming and timing your shots properly. And as a result, moving around in AO Tennis 2 doesn't feel good at all. Next up is serving. Serving in AO Tennis 2 is actually pretty decent. You can aim your serves and control the power using a timing meter, which works similar to Topspin 2K25. But here's the catch, and there is always a freaking catch in big end studio games, returning serves is way too easy in AO2. Whether you're playing against the computer or another person, no one has much trouble returning serves. And that's because you don't even need to move much to return the serve which makes the whole return and serve mechanics really disappointing. Now let's get into the physics and shot balance, two really important parts of any good tennis game. Sadly, both of these are handled really poorly in AO Tennis 2. 
For starters, there's almost no difference between flat shot and topspin. It's actually really hard to tell which one you're even hitting. Let's do a quick test. I will show you two shots. Let's see if you can tell me which one is flat and which one is topspin. Ready? Great. The first shot was actually the flat shot. Were you able to tell or were you just guessing? See, the balance is so damn off that aggressive topspin shots end up being way stronger and safer than flat shots. I actually hit way more winners using aggressive topspin than when I try with flat shots, which is bonkers. The ball physics are also really strange. The ball's path feels very floaty, but at the same time, the speed is too fast. So somehow they achieved to make aggressive topspin shots fly like rockets, while slices hang in the air forever and bounce way too high. And then we have animations, which are also really odd. Sometimes characters suddenly speed up to reach balls that should be out of their reach, like they've got some temporary superpowers. Now let's dive into a big problem with Big Ant Studios tennis games, the difficulty, and what they call CPU, quote unquote, logic. For the first few hours of playing AO Tennis 2, you might actually have some fun and feel challenged when facing the computer. It took me around 4 to 5 hours to figure out how the CPU works and start winning easily. Granted, since I spent a lot of time playing tennis games for my YouTube channel, I might have a bit more experience than more casual gamers, but eventually I believe anyone will be able to break this game. Here are a few things that I noticed about the CPU difficulty. First off, the way the computer plays doesn't really change between the different difficulty levels. The CPU plays the exactly same way whether you are on medium difficulty like Veteran or Grand Slam, which is the hardest one. See, in AO Tennis 2, the only real difference between the difficulty levels seems to be that the shot timing window gets much tighter on the higher difficulty. And that's about it. Another big issue is that the computer doesn't make errors, like almost ever, and they don't even hit many winners either. So basically playing against the CPU feels like I am up against a ball machine, not a real opponent. I've had literally matches where the CPU made zero mistakes and barely hit any winners. It's like the entire match is just up to me, whether I win or lose the point. And that kind of gameplay gets boring really, really fast. The good thing is that the game has sliders to tweak certain things, which is nice, but they are all focused on how difficult things are for you, the player, or how the ball and court physics work. There is no slider for adjusting how the CPU plays, unlike in Full Ace Tennis Simulator. And since the CPU's behavior is the biggest issue with AO Tennis 2, that's a real missed opportunity. Now let's switch gears and talk about the career mode. See, the career mode in AO Tennis 2 is actually pretty solid. In fact, compared to tiebreak, AO Tennis 2 has more complete career mode, and things actually work here as they should. You can either play as your own created player or take control of a star player. Career mode spans multiple seasons, and you can get sponsors, train your player, and unlock career specific perks. So if you enjoy the gameplay and the difficulty level of AO Tennis 2, and those are big fucking ifs, then the career mode can keep you entertained for many hours. Another important part of any tennis game is the roster, basically the list of available players and all the licenses involved. In AO Tennis 2, we do have some WTA and ATP players, but the official licensing is seriously lacking. There are only about 31 licensed players and many top ranked players are actually missing. Instead, there is a heavy focus on Australian players like Kyrgios, Kokinakis, Popirin and Barty, which makes sense since the developers are based in Australia. What saves the game in terms of player variety are the community creations. AO Tennis 2 has an academy where the community can create and share their own versions of players, venues, logos and competitions. This really helps fill in the gaps where the developers couldn't secure the rights. So basically you can download tons of current or former players as well as real courts to make the game feel more complete. The downside is that the unofficial players created by the community 
don't look great, and that's putting it mildly. The models did their best, but a lot of the player models don't resemble the real-life players much at all. Now, let's talk about multiplayer. Unfortunately, there's not much to say here, because it's really hard to find matches online. I've tried several times to queue up for quick matches, and I couldn't find anyone to play with. Once, I even waited for over 30 minutes and nothing popped up. This isn't surprising though. The game has been out for over 4 years, and the player base seems pretty small, at least judging by the Steam numbers. So, if you're thinking about buying AO Tennis 2 mainly for online competition, I would suggest looking elsewhere. So, to wrap things up, AO Tennis 2 is a bit of mixed bag. At first, the game seems pretty fun, with its precision aiming, shot release timing, and a decent career mode. You will probably enjoy the first few hours, especially if you are into single-player tennis games. Career mode, in particular, is well done and can keep you entertained for a while. But once you spend more time with the game, the cracks start to show. The gameplay feels very scripted and shallow, the movement is too assisted, and the difficulty doesn't really challenge you once you figure out the CPU patterns. It feels like you're playing against the ball machine, not a real opponent. The physics and shot balance are also very off. You can't tell the difference between flat and topspin, and the ball speed and animation just don't feel right. And let's not forget about the roster. It's pretty bare. So, the community creations help fill in the gaps a little bit. And if you're thinking about online multiplayer, well, good luck. So, would I recommend AO Tennis 2? Well, if you can get it on sale and just want a few hours of single player fun, it's not a bad pick. But for serious tennis fans or those looking for real competition, you might want to pass on this one. If you like this review, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more tennis gaming content. And as always, drop a comment below if you have any questions or thoughts on AO Tennis 2. Anyway, that's all from me in this video. Thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next one.